Hello and welcome to this special broadcast as we continue to decode the implications of demonetization. Another wasted day in Parliament. As much as we thought that Parliament would in fact function and we would see a debate, that was not to be the case. We heard lots of sound bites outside of Parliament with Rahul Gandhi, the Vice President of the Congress Party, saying that if he speaks, there would be an earthquake. But short of that, there was nothing much that really transpired. All of this has now put a question mark on other significant legislation and that is the goods and services tax. Our understanding is that perhaps there is very little elbow room now left to pass the GST in this session of Parliament itself. Also, there are now question marks as far as the economy and the health of the economy is concerned. We've just had an IIP number come in, IIP contracting for the month of October, coming in at minus 1.9% versus 0.7% in September. And experts now suggest that on the back of what we've seen happen with demonetization, perhaps the IIP number could look much worse for the month of November. So are we headed into a period of protracted contraction is the larger question. The Supreme Court has also been in the play today with the Supreme Court hearing the petition on demonetization. We'll get to that in just a bit. But the government, for the very first time, the Attorney General admitting in the Supreme Court that the assumptions on deposits have been wrong. In fact, deposits have in fact crossed what was the estimate of the government. We'll get our colleague Ashmit Kumar and our panel of experts to discuss and debate all of this and more in just a second. But first up, here's Rahul Gandhi, the Vice President of the Congress Party, his attack outside Parliament on the government. I want to talk about demonetization, which I want to talk about the people of the people. I want to talk about the people of the people. I want to talk about और ये जो पूरा का पूरा नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने अकेले हिंदुस्तान का बड़ सबसे बड़ा स्कैम किया है उसके बारे में बताना चाहता हूं और इसके पीछे क्या है ये भी बताना चाहता हूं और मुझे रोका जा रहा है बेसिकली यू आर सेइंग यू आर गोइंग टू प्रूव इन द पार्लियामेंट 100% इफ दे इफ दे अलाउ मी टू स्पीक इन पार्लियामेंट you will see what an earthquake is going to cause. That is Rahul Gandhi saying that I could cause an earthquake if I were to speak in Parliament, but the government is not allowing me to speak in Parliament. To take this conversation forward, our first guest on the program, Abhishek Manu Singhvi of the Congress Party. Mr. Singhvi, appreciate you joining us here, sir. You know, for the average viewer, sir, it doesn't matter what rule the Congress would like this debate to happen or what rule the government would like this debate to happen. If your Vice President is saying that if I were to speak, I will cause an earthquake, Earthquake. If I were to speak, the Prime Minister would have no place to hide. If I were to speak, there will be serious consequences for the government. I will unearth what is the biggest scam. Why these tantalizing sound bites? Why not the substance, sir? Because, obviously, in panic mode, scared and totally unconfident, this government with a 323 majority in Lok Sabha is refusing to have a debate with a vote. Therein lies a story, Shirin. Hmm. A government which is every day telling you what an outsurge of upsurge of support it has from the people for demonetization cannot risk hmm. a vote even amongst its own allies within Lok Sabha. We want the world to know what is this support? Is it like a house of cards? Is he sure of even the BJP support, leave aside the Allies' support? Is that an illegitimate demand in the temple of democracy? And I have never yet seen a government, unless it is extremely scared, unsure of itself and unconfident, saying no to a debate with a vote. You, and this is a vote we are talking of in a house where you have a majority, and not a majority, mm. a majority of over 60 or 55. So please give me a logical answer. The only logical answer so for Mr. this would be that it is you who are scared, you who are obstructive, you who do not want the debate to take place, otherwise can start tomorrow. Mr. Singhvi, you're making a very important point. You're saying that the government is afraid uh, to conduct a debate with a vote because it believes that it may not necessarily have the support of its own allies and perhaps even its own MPs. Absolutely. That is the minimum inference for a government to resolutely allow three quarters of a session to be washed out on this zid. There was one massive political zid in demonetization. This is a subsidiary zid on the inside parliament. It is nothing but political obstinacy. It is the politics mm. of zid. You please but, tell me, but, but Mr. have Mr. you Mr. ever Singh seen Mr. a Singh government Singh not agreeing to a, d a division with a vote on a debate where you are short of a majority? Forget the Rajya Sabha, please. 
kindly consider the no, Lok Sabha. It, 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 you might make a valid point there, Mr. Singhvi, but if, since you're talking about a politics of zid and you're talking about politics of obstinacy, sir, uh, the same charge could be leveled of, against the opposition, against the Congress party. If the Congress feels that it has this dossier, as your vice president makes it sound, that this is the biggest scam, if he speaks there will be an earthquake and so on and so forth, are you not doing a disservice to the country by not coming out and talking about it openly, by not asking questions, by not raising those issues? Why are you... Answers. allowing the government to get away short, get away with the free pass two, two, two short answers one that is no answer to the fact that the government wants no debate with a vote two if you were to have this dossier revealed there and then have a vote you would have the smashing result of that vote on that huge anarchy that is what the government wants to avoid and third if they don't still agree to a debate with a vote there are three days left Nothing prevents Mr. Rahul Gandhi to reveal it at a time and a place of his choosing. It is not within Parliament mm. alone that he can reveal this dossier. He has all his uh, strategies up his sleeve and he can decide the time and the place of his own choice. So you're but saying there is a dossier? Us, accuse the government. You're saying that there is a dossier and that Rahul dossier. Gandhi may speak no, outside of Parliament? dossier is your word. Dossier is your word. If Rahul Gandhi is not allowed to speak with a vote, by a government which is majority in the Lok Sabha, he of course retains and reserves the full right and I have no doubt that he will exercise it to speak outside parliament. The word dossier is your word. He will make clear sure. facts and figures which will shock you. Mr. Singh, we, let me ask you this, uh, and it's a straight question, sir. Monday and Tuesday, Parliament will not reconvene. You've got two days left as far as this winter session is concerned. Uh, you know, is there any possibility, any chance at all, that the goods and services tax could perhaps go through or at least be tabled, taken up in some form or fashion in this session at all? Three or four simple answers. First of all, I would be less than candid, and I'd be accused of fooling you and your viewers to suggest even the remotest possibility, even in normal course, two days is not enough for a bill like that, number one. Number two, remember, it's our baby, our bill. Now, just tell me, who is responsible for creating India's most fractured mandate by a sudden push of a button on 8th of November? Did we do it? Who created the fracture in the mandate, which was so difficult to bring about that you had some broad consensus on GSP? Well, you have to only ask the government these questions. You have destroyed whatever consensus you have tried to build. And you have destroyed it to the extent that now we have it on reasonable high authority that the minimum when the GST, if lucky, will be born is September 17, not April 17. That is virtually on okay. governmental official authority. Even the PDI, okay. your colleagues so have carried it. Now, if you yeah, achieve that, along compulsion. with 10 other okay. things, Hmm. No, if you have achieved that, along with 10 other things like a possible depletion in the GDP and the absolute uh, murderous assault on the ordinary people of India, then I think it's the biggest hmm. self-goal and hit wicket which Mr. Modi has accomplished in the history of independent India. Okay, uh, Mr. Singh, let me ask you a, a question uh, on a story that's just broken. The CBI has arrested the former Chief of Air Staff, uh, S.P. Tyagi, in connection with the Augusta Westland case. Augusta Westland was a deal that was struck in 2010 under the UPA government. I wanted your first reaction on the arrest that's just been made. I don't think there is anything new in that. Nothing new. This this name has been floating around for the last one and a half years or two years, ever since this government took over and even before. The question which was asked in Parliament when I opened the debate for the opposition in Rajya Sabha was that if you are doing so much of tom-tomming, why have you not taken any concrete step for 30 months? You do so much of tom-tomming, innuendo, insinuation against Congress and Congress leaders. Have you taken a single concrete step? Well, at least after 30 months of this government, this is the first concrete step they've taken. I'm sure it will be according to law if they are not biased. But it has taken them 30 long months just to keep the pot boiling, do nothing, and now have an arrest. The timing, sir, of this arrest, uh, does this raise eyebrows of any kind within the Congress camp? Because uh, there are murmurs that perhaps we could see now the heat uh, on the Congress party itself. Well, I think... Uh, the issue is old, the inactivity of this new government is old, 
the fact that this government has always spoken more in jumlas and slogans and done little action on the ground is old. But certainly diversionary tactics in the middle of demonetization is what they are trying every week. This could well be another diversionary attention drawing tactic. I don't know. I can't say. In any case, it has to proceed according to law. But certainly all amount of diversionary tactics, and I'm not restricting myself to this one, cannot possibly take away the complete mindlessness. Uh, Shirin, just give me half a second more. Never before in the history of India has a decision been taken affecting such a humongous mass of people with so little consultation or broad facing or thought. Never before have you had 120 zigzags in less than a month and a half. It looks like, you know, the joke is that if you say that I've just gone to the uh, bathroom and come back, in the meanwhile, has there any change in the new rule or new RBI policy? This is not the government of India. The government of India is proud that unlike its neighbors, you are having institutional decision making. This is zigzag, knee jerk, uh, episodic decision making from the gut with no continuity. And there are thousands of the problems they created. My final question to you, Mr. Singhvi, you said that Mr. Rahul Gandhi will choose at an appropriate time to reveal uh, evidence that you have to qualify this as the biggest scam perpetrated against India. Uh, if not in Parliament, when outside Parliament, sir, when is the Congress going to reveal its cards? Well, obviously, if you don't allow him, and he's very ready to do it in Parliament, if you don't allow him to do it with a vote... Nothing stopping him from then, speaking uh, outside uh, Parliament, Mr. Singhvi. No, 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 no. He wouldn't do that while Parliament is in session. He would never do that. And he shouldn't do that. And nobody should do that. That's the whole point. He has made it clear, you allow me even on a holiday tomorrow, allow me on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, any day Parliament is functioning, allow a vote and I'll do it. Now, obviously, it's an insult to Parliament if while Parliament is on, he goes and does it outside. But I'm sure that in this free democratic country, if the Prime Minister and the BJP, which I repeat, is running scared, is running in panic helter-skelter to prevent a division of vote, certainly of its allies, but within the BJP itself. You have seen marks of dissension in private conversation. Everybody knows that 80% or 90% of BJP MPs are hesitant, doubtful, so self that is, that is the charge that the Congress is making, up. sir. That, that is yes. the charge that the Congress is making, but it's not a charge that, that the government or the BJP is accepting. But, but I well, don't have anyone uh, no, from that, the government that to, to is, defend that position, that, sir. That charge is proved. That charge is proved, Shirin, by one simple fact. He should have allowed a They're debate They're not accepting the vote a vote in Parliament. blocking it. Okay. Yes. All right, Mr. Singh, we always a pleasure speaking okay. with you. That really proves the pudding. Yes. Thanks very much for joining us. That's Abhishek Manu Singhvi there of the Congress Party. Rahul Gandhi saying that if he speaks, he will cause an earthquake. The demonetization, the biggest scam that's been perpetrated. But uh, let's bring in our other guest, uh, Arun Kumar, economist with us, also the former Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of India, K.C. Chakrabarti. Uh, gentlemen, appreciate you joining us. Uh, uh, Mr. Kumar, let me move away from the politics and let's talk about economics. As I was pointing out, we've just had an IIP number come out at minus 1.9%. Given the fact that we are now seeing factories announce production shutdowns, which are more than usual, we have seen consumption contract or at least slow down quite significantly. Do you believe that things are going to get significantly worse before they start to recover? Yes. You know, uh, the problem is that cash is needed in the economy to circulate incomes. And if cash is short, then income circulation becomes difficult and production becomes difficult. So what is happening is that increasingly there's difficulty in uh, production and income generation. And therefore, consumption is coming down, especially from the unorganized sector. And from the organized sector, what's happening is that discretionary demand is being postponed to later because of the cash shortage. So people are saying, if I need to buy a shirt, I can buy it two months later. If I need to change my mobile phone, I can do that later. Mm. Or if I need to buy a scooter or a motorcycle, uh, then I can also do that later once the situation is uh, better. So in that sense, demand is getting postponed, and that's why production is getting affected. And already capacity utilization in industry was down to about 75%. Yeah. So that is falling further. And if wholesalers are to be believed, they are saying that their business is down by 70%. Mm. Now, even if that's an exaggeration and if it's down by 20%, that's a very significant drop in uh, retail sales, uh, which is translating into wholesale dealers' uh, declining sales. Uh, similarly, the truckers are saying that they are having, you know, 30% or 40% of their trucks uh, which are not moving. 
uh, and also you find from the uh, toll uh, yeah. plazas yeah. that the number of trucks coming has declined very sharply. Right. That also proves that movement of goods has slowed down uh, yeah, because the demand you know, is not there. Uh, while while so, you're painting this picture, uh, Ms. Arun Kumar, the yeah. Reserve Bank is painting a very different picture. And let me bring in the former Deputy Governor, Mr. Kechi Chakrabarti, into this conversation. Uh, you know, anecdotally, we're hearing that things are not moving on the ground. You just heard what Mr. Arun Kumar has had to say, and his voice is being echoed by several others within industry uh, as well as uh, economists. But if I were to look at what the Reserve Bank is saying, uh, Dr. Chakrabarti, it's merely saying that the G GVA outlook has been cut from 7.6% to 7.1%. That doesn't tell you that things are going to look much worse for the economy, that demonetization is going to have a significant impact or a significant hit on the economy. Is the Reserve Bank being optimistic, overtly optimistic perhaps? You see, look, ultimately Reserve Bank is also saying that growth will come down. Now, 0.5%, 1%, 2%, it is the perception what will happen. And Reserve Bank has also clearly identified that there is a demonetization risk to the economy. Now, rest is that how much it will come down. Yes, people are not accepting the fact. I will say that nobody who is involved with the decision-making process in this area, they are not accepting the fact. In fact, Reserve Bank is itself saying that there is enough note in the supply. In the, there is enough note available. So I will not say, but they have definitely accepted that this is a risk and 0.5% estimate is coming down and this is only still there will be one policy in February. So they are accepting but yes, what I say that it may not be the fully or they may not have visualized the entire thing or partly because they are also involved with the same policy making. They are saying that we have been consulted. So maybe they don't want to reveal that but they have identified the risk. No, no, they may have yeah. identified the risk, but I'll come back to you, uh, yeah. Ms. Arun Kumar, in just a second. Uh, Dr. Chakrabarti, I wanted to get your view today, because today there has been an admission and a clear acknowledgement by the government that it got its assumptions wrong on the money that would return by way of deposits. The Attorney General in the Supreme Court of India today saying very clearly that we have received deposits of about 12 lakh crore rupees already. Deposits have exceeded estimates that the government was working with, and deposits are likely to rise by by at least another one lakh crores. If the assumptions of what the government was hoping to get back in the system by way of deposits is wrong, today acknowledged by the government itself, perhaps some of the other uh, factors, some of the other, other assumptions uh, are, are perhaps on a wobbly wicket as well, Dr. Chakrabarti. Yeah, I have said you in your earlier show also. You see, we don't use such blunt instrument. Okay, suddenly it will give you more pain. The cost is more, benefit is less. Absolutely, if somebody said that this will give a very good result, that means the assumptions is wrong. What is there we are saying? We are professional. We don't change our stand every day. I have said this thing before five years. I will say the same thing even after five years. Many assumptions have definitely gone wrong, and not only one, many assumptions might have gone wrong. Sir, on the assumption of when we could actually see this remonetization process take place, please explain to me and please explain to our viewers, sir, because the government, the Prime Minister said, give me 50 days. The Reserve Bank, in its press conference, when it announced the monetary policy, also stated that there is no issue as far as cash supply is concerned and that things will significantly start to improve within a few days. Now, today, once again in the Supreme Court, the petitioner in one of these matters, Mr. Chidamram, who's a petitioner, for the cooperative banks has talked about a 9 lakh crore rupee vacuum. What should we realistically now expect, sir, in terms of remonetization? Because the so, uh, Attorney General today very categorically stating in court, and I want to quote those numbers, saying that we have printed new notes worth 4 lakh crore rupees, 3.5 lakh crores already in the system. When can we truly expect the remonetization process to be complete? How long will it take? You see, look, it all depends on, depends on how our printing presses are working. Now, I have seen various estimates. It varies from four months to one year to print the same amount of not, at least 500,000 rupees, which have been demonetized, to send the same cash. Now, we can little bit compress it. It all depends on how efficient and press are, what is our mitigating, risk mitigating measure, but 
by any chance nobody is saying that this will be rectified within the four less than three months period and outer limit is that by one year we'll be able to improve now it is the reserve bank government has to say because you see you have to work now i cannot give an estimate i can give a normal position it will vary from four months to one year to print the notes then to distribute the notes equitably across the country to reach the last mile connectivity it depends on your ability to take the note now you are you have brought back the notes very fast but your ability to take the note will be not that fast and if the notes are in the short supply there will be holding so it is very difficult my own estimate is that it should take about six months time to normalize the situation that means there is no restriction on the people to withdraw the cash from their bank branch. So you believe that the constraints on withdrawals, the withdrawal limits that the Reserve Bank has imposed will continue even beyond the 30th of December, Mr. Chakrabarti? That is my assumption. You see, look, that is what my assumption, that the, um, my understanding of the thing. The, yes, it, 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 will take, uh, it will take that much time. Definitely okay. uh, up to December now, nobody is expecting that by December these things will be improved and there will be no restriction. I don't think so. Because even today many ATMs are not having any cash. Even this amount of 24,000 per week, if you go reality, branch managers are helpless. They are not able to give any cash. In fact, they are themselves There is, that there is a rationing that. that's underway. There is a rationing that is underway. People in banks are not being allowed to even meet the requirements that have been laid out by the Reserve Bank of India. But, uh, Ms. Arun Kumar, a quick response. You wanted to come in. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I wanted to say was that uh, what the RBI gave as uh, the growth figures uh, were based on pre-demonetization situation. So with demonetization, a new situation has arisen. And that, I think, uh, the Reserve no, Bank says... No, it has factored in, sir. In its monetary policy and no. the growth outlook, it has said that there is going to be uncertainty. But at this point in right. time, they believe that the outlook, they've reduced it from 7.6 to 7.1. So they have factored uh, in demonetization to some extent. Uh, Whether fully or not is a separate matter yeah, altogether. But, but you know, when, when I read it, I, I say, feel that what they're saying is there's uncertainty, but they're not going to put a number to that. Yeah. And what number they're putting is for pre uh, the, the demonetization phase. Uh, the second point I want to make is that there's a comparison with 2007 8 global crisis. That time also the experts were behind the curve. So when the economy is going down, the IMF and the other uh, very important right. institutions were at least six months behind the curve. So the growth rate that they were giving was what was happening six months earlier. So this is uh, another possibility that's there. Now, regarding the 50-day period that yes. uh, we were talking about, uh, there are several factors. You know, you, what you want to do is print currency that had been printed over 15 years mm. in a very short space of time. Right. You need ink, you need paper, and I, I'm told that the ink was uh, tendered only about 15 days back. Sure. You know, so there'll be shortage of ink. Uh, you need a lot of paper, which, you know, you don't stock always. Yeah. So paper would be required. That would take time. Mm. Then, as uh, Mr. Chakravarti was saying, there's hoarding going on. Yeah. People are holding on to small denomination currency notes. Right. And the 2,000 rupee currency note is not coming back into the banks okay. because it's not going around. So you need to print more. Okay. So not only would you have to print 14 and a half lakh crores, but probably, you know, much more than 14 and a half lakh crores. So therefore, the shortage would continue for much longer. And I concur with uh, Mr. Chakravarti that the shortage could be as long as for about a year or so. Now, if this shortage continues, that means the impact on production and distribution yeah. will also continue for that long. So in other words, the effect of the, on the economy will not be short term, but right. a long term effect will take place. Okay, and in fact, as we speak, uh, my understanding is, uh, and uh, this is the new notification that's come in from the government, the government has now withdrawn exemptions given to the use of 500 rupee old notes from the midnight of December 9th for making payments at railway ticketing counters, ticket counters of public sector undertaking buses or the purchase of tickets. So uh, this is, this is uh, the latest notification that's just come in from the government. So you can no longer use your old 500 rupee notes starting midnight tonight at any of the railway ticketing counters or uh, public sector undertakings for the purchases of bus tickets, etc. So all of those exemptions uh, that had been uh, sort of, this was one of the few exemptions that continued to uh, be left on the table, but even this has now been taken away by the government. But uh, Mr. Chakrabarti, if I could get you back before we join the finance minister of Kerala, uh, if I could ask you now about what you believe is the 
prognosis as far as interest rates are concerned? Because the big expectation was that the Reserve Bank would at least cut by 25 basis points, if not more. The Reserve Bank has announced a status quo policy. Uh, banks still, though, believe that they will be able to transmit a little bit because they do have adequate liquidity at this point in time. What do you believe is the trend on interest rates? Because that's been the other big bet. The economic argument for demonetization, one of the arguments has been that banks will be able to cut rates significantly, thereby providing a fillip to the economy. You see, so far as interest rate is concerned, we must understand. In respect of interest rate, there are two set of people. One is the depositor and there is the borrower. Borrower wants a lower interest rate, depositors wants a higher interest rate. And the interest rate has already come down. You see, now this is another tragedy that I cannot withdraw my deposit, but on my FDR mature, I cannot withdraw, but on that deposit has come down and I can't do anything. Now, if poor has having only one bank account, he has nothing, he has to continue with the deposit at a lower rate of interest. Now, this transmission effect is, effect is not there. That is, Reserve Bank is admitting, Ministry of Finance is admitting. There is a lot of problem. There is an issue of competition. More than that, I think our interest rate deregulation is done in such a way where we have not protected the right of the consumer. Even whatever interest rate banks are reducing, it is not reducing the interest rate of existing customer. It is only marginal cost of funds basis, the new customer's rate or who has started borrowing with this rate. So all what I'm saying that I am not too much worried about the interest rate because for interest rate depositors, interest has already come down. And so far as borrowers are concerned, I repeat it, that if anybody is getting money from the banks, he is a privileged person because his alternate cost of borrowing is much, much higher. So interest rate will come down when there will be structural reform in the system, when there will be more competition, when we have clear policy by Reserve Bank, how the interest rate benefits is to be passed on to the customer. Uh, uh, quickly, in 10 seconds, uh, Mr. Chakrabarti, and I'll come to you, Mr. Arun Kumar, for a final word. Uh, Dr. Manmohan Singh, the former Prime Minister, today in his uh, piece in The Hindu, has said that this will have demonetization, among the many other things, will have a hazardous impact on the Indian economy. 10 seconds to respond to that comment. Yeah, if we are not able to mitigate the risk arising out of this uh, uh, demonetization, or it is actually not demonetization, it is actually de uh, taking away the currency, definitely we have adverse impact. Now, how much? It all depends on what corrective measure we take. You see, I don't put a guess. I concur to agree with the economic wisdom of Dr. Manmohan Singh. All right, uh, Mr. Arun Kumar, final say to yeah. you, sir, 10 uh, seconds. So, you know, interest rates cannot be cut when there's uncertainty, especially global uncertainty there, internal uncertainty. So cutting interest rate would actually might lead to more capital outflows, which is what the Reserve Bank probably is worried about. Uh, second is that even if the interest rates are cut, in a situation when demand is very uncertain, uh, there there'd be no increase in the st uh, growth rate. And thirdly, if you look at uh, uh, Japan and uh, Eurozone, their interest rates are close to zero, but their economies are not picking up. So interest rate cannot be a policy which will then lead to an increased rate of growth. So I think we have to go cautiously on the interest rate uh, situation. Okay. Uh, gentlemen, appreciate you joining us, Mr. Kumar and Mr. Chakrabarti. Appreciate you joining us. We have another special guest lined up. The Finance Minister of Kerala, Thomas Isaac. Will the demonetization derail the GST? Are we likely to see the GST miss its date with the winter session of Parliament? That and more when we return.